I work at a baseball stadium part-time during the summers. Last summer, I worked just about every home game. The story takes place one time after we had a night game. One of my duties at work is to help clean the stadium when the game is over. Many times, we will have it ready for another game the very next day. So each of us are assigned a certain section to clean and have instructions on how to clean it. There are so many of us that the entire stadium can be good to go within an hour or two of the game ending. So on this night game in particular, the stadium was pretty busy while the game was going on. After it ended, there's usually an extremely busy time of about 10 minutes. That's when everybody is leaving and the concourse is usually packed. Then things very quickly start to quiet down. I remember that I was busy between the seats in the section that I was in and the concourse nearby. There was just one other coworker with me in that particular section. I just know that probably 20 minutes after the game, things were much quieter, and I told my coworker that I would go clean the bathrooms on this night. He would stay out in the seats picking up trash that was left there. So I first went into the restrooms and checked, and there was just one person that was in a stall in the men's restroom. Meanwhile, the women's was empty. And as far as the concourse, by now, almost 30 minutes after the game, virtually all fans were gone. There were just a few here and there who were taking their time to leave. I went ahead and cleaned the women's restroom, which took me maybe 10 minutes. Then when I came out, I went to go do the men's. I was sure by now that it would be empty, but there was still a person in one of the stalls. I thought about asking them to leave, but I decided to give it a couple more minutes. So I went out and changed a trash can in the concourse. This took me several minutes, but the man still hadn't left the restrooms. So at that point, I decided to go inside and ask him to leave. When I entered the restroom though, the one stall was still closed, but it didn't look like anybody was inside. I didn't see the feet at the bottom like I had before. I asked if anybody was in there, but I got no response. I announced that I had to clean and then started to do so. When I got to the stall that was closed, I knocked on it one last time. There was nothing in response. I started to wonder to myself if the stall had just been closed the whole time and nobody was in there. After not getting a response, I started to go underneath it to unlock the door. When I did, I saw a man standing on the toilet, luckily fully clothed. He was looking right at me and it was a huge surprise. I moved back and said that he had to leave now. The man didn't do anything. I asked if he was okay or if he could hear me. He didn't say anything back to me, but a second later, there was a loud bang from the other side of the door. It was like the man was pounding on it as hard as he possibly could. This happened several more times. At that point, I left the bathroom and decided to tell my coworker that was in the area. So I went back out into the concourse and then into the seats. I located my coworker and told him of the problem. At first, he thought it was funny and wanted to talk to the guy. So we both went back and entered the men's restroom. When we went inside though, the man was gone. All of the stall doors were still open. I was happy that he was gone, and then my coworker left to go back to the seats. I finished up and cleaned the rest of the men's room. Then I left and was going to join in helping my coworker in the seats. That would always take the longest. But as I re-entered the concourse from the restrooms, something caught my eye. There was a few things used for concessions that were moved off to the side. One of them was a small fridge. It was a full-sized fridge with Pepsi and other soft drinks in it. I don't know how, but I noticed a man was hiding behind it. When I saw this, I started to walk over. I got within maybe 10 feet, and the man quickly moved out from behind the fridge. Then he ran past me and headed towards the seating area. Now we were on the 100 level, which is the closest to the field. I ran after the guy and he entered the seating area where my coworker was. The man ran down the aisle and passed my coworker. He got all the way to the field and then jumped over the wall and went onto the playing field. There were a few ground crew workers out there. The man ran all the way to the outfield before we saw a security guard catch up with him. Finally, he was caught and escorted off the field. My coworker and I both laughed at that point, but it was actually pretty creepy to me before that. I had no clue why the man was hiding in the restroom for so long. I'm not sure why he did that, but it was a memorable night.
This is the story of my scariest experience going to a sports game. And my team only won five games last year. Talk about horror. Anyways, I won't say which team is my favorite, but it's an American football team. The games are always packed, and I'm sure to go to several each year. Because of how many people go to every game, parking can be a bit of a nightmare. I live pretty close by, but not close enough that I can walk or anything. I obviously have to drive. So for this game, I parked sort of far from the stadium. I had researched a little bit beforehand, and I was able to park for free in a Target parking lot. It was a night game, and I arrived about an hour before kickoff. I was meeting a friend there who took an Uber from his work. So after parking towards the back of the Target parking lot, I saw that nobody else going to the game seemed to be parking here. I left and soon got onto a sidewalk. I thought that it was going to take me forever to walk there, but it actually wasn't really that long. By the time I arrived at the stadium, I felt like a genius. I got to park for free and probably wouldn't have to deal with much traffic afterwards. When I was close to the stadium, I caught up with the huge mob of people that was entering. I was able to find my friend and then we went inside. We got to our seats and then watched the game. It went by mostly normal. Where things got strange was after the game. So when it was over, I stayed back and talked with my friend for a while. Then we headed for the exits and left. There was still a ton of people around. So my friend and I went our separate ways and I started walking back to my car. Now I would say that it would take me about 15 minutes to walk back, maybe 20. At first, there were lots of other people walking along the sidewalk with me. Then, the farther I went, the less people there were. Soon, it was just me. I continued to walk, and when crossing a street, I noticed that there was actually one person that was walking behind me. He was a ways back, though. I kept going, thinking that I was heading in the right direction of my vehicle. The man behind me continued walking with me. I thought at first that maybe he also parked at the Target, or nearby. We kept going, but I soon realized that I had got my directions mixed up. I accidentally went about two blocks in the wrong direction. So I took out my phone and I looked up the correct way. Then I was back on track. Several minutes later, things were very dark and quiet, but I could still hear the footsteps behind me. They sounded slightly closer than before. I glanced over my shoulder. The guy was still there walking behind me. It was a little bit weird now because of the fact that I had drastically changed my direction. I mean, why would he still be following me? I just ignored it though. We kept walking, and soon the target was in sight. By now, it was around 11 p.m., and the target had closed at 10. My car was basically the only one in the entire parking lot. There were a few other vehicles a long ways away on the other side, but mine was the only one in the area. When I approached, the man was still trailing me, but even closer now. At that point, I was really suspicious. I walked faster and then entered the parking lot. I thought that I heard the guy behind me start to jog, so I did as well. I jogged all the way to my car. I unlocked it from a distance away so that I could get inside quickly. When I had made it within maybe 50 feet of the car, I started sprinting. It was apparent that the man was chasing after me now for some reason. I was probably 30 feet in front of the guy. I reached my car, opened the door, and got inside. Then I locked the doors instantly and started the engine. As I was starting it up, the man reached my car and tried opening it. When it wouldn't, he got about two punches in at my driver's window, which held up. Then I quickly drove out of there, leaving the man standing in the mostly empty parking lot. After leaving, I called the police and reported what happened to them. Then I drove back home. Since that experience, I haven't parked in that Target parking lot for a night game. I have for day games though, and nothing else like that has happened. I think that the man was attempting to rob me, either from my car or whatever else I had. I'm not sure why he chose to follow me though. I don't remember seeing him at all during the game or anything, and hopefully I never see him again. For some background to this story, I'm a female, and this event took place when I went to a basketball game with some friends. We were going to a night game at the arena in the city. 
I carpooled with some friends, and four of us went together in total. We took Caitlin's car, which was an SUV, so it had the most amount of space. Now we parked in a parking ramp very close to the stadium, which is downtown in a major city. After arriving, we got to our seats and were watching the game. We had pretty good seats and were sitting in the first level about 20 rows up from the floor. At one point, I don't remember exactly when, I got up to get some food. For some reason, nobody came with me. I don't remember why. Anyways, I went over and was in line, and the guy behind me started hitting on me. He was trying to flirt and stuff, and I really wasn't interested in him. He was taller than me, maybe six feet tall, smelled badly, and wore a baggy sweatshirt and a hat. Now, I wasn't rude to the guy, but when he asked me for my number, I told him that I wasn't interested. He left me alone for a short time, but after ordering food, I left to go back to my seats. The guy stopped me and stood in front of me. He asked me where I was sitting and asked if he could sit with me. I told him no, I was sitting with my friends. Then I walked away. He didn't follow me then, but when I got back to my seats, about five minutes later, I saw the guy. He was standing in the aisle and he waved at me. Now, there were literally no open seats around us. I didn't think that he was sitting near us, but at first I wasn't sure. The guy was in the aisle, blocking people's view, and I guess trying to find a way to get to us. After standing there for like a minute, somebody told him to sit down. This finally got him to walk away. He went back up the aisle and left the section. I couldn't believe that he had actually come down and tried to sit near us. For the rest of the game, I did not see him. I ended up forgetting about the interaction for the most part. When the game was over, the four of us left the stadium. Right outside, there was a large crowd of people who were all leaving the arena like us. In the midst of this, I saw the man again, but not before he saw me. By the time I noticed him, he was already looking at me and walking in my direction. My friends and I then tried to quickly walk away. The man literally followed us all the way to the parking garage. He was trying to talk to me and stuff, but I told him that I was not interested. So we got inside the parking structure and then went inside of Caitlin's car. I didn't notice the man when we were in there, and when we got in the car, I was sitting in the back, and we left. At first, we got stuck in traffic, but it didn't last for very long. During the entire drive back, I was talking with my friends and completely distracted. Now, my apartment is not that far outside of the city, so I was dropped off first. Caitlin pulled over to the side of the road in front of my building. I said bye to my friends and then got out. Then they drove off. Right when I started walking to my apartment, I noticed that another car was pulled over on the side of the road with the lights on. It was behind where we had been. Then the lights turned off and the driver's door opened. As I was walking, I saw the same guy get out. I was so surprised and had no idea where he had come from. He was a ways away and I did my best to go to the front door of my apartment quickly. He was walking right over to me. I could not believe the nerve on this guy. I made it to the front door and used my key fob to open it. I made sure to close it right behind me so the guy couldn't get in. He tried opening the locked door, but couldn't get in. I went to the elevator and got up to my floor where my apartment was. When I got inside, I looked out of my window to the front sidewalk, but I didn't see the guy leaving. My building was not very big. I would say it's about average size. There's really just a small lobby and then four levels, which are all just a straight hallway. I just hoped that the man wouldn't make it inside. Probably 10 minutes later though, I remember I checked out of the window again and still didn't see him. I noticed that his car was still there though. I hoped that he was maybe inside of his car and going to leave for good, but I couldn't tell if anybody was in the driver's seat or not. A short time later though, I remember randomly hearing footsteps outside in the hallway. Now it could have been anybody, but for some reason, I had a feeling that it was the same guy, and I went over and looked. I walked to my front door and looked through the peephole. I was just in time to see the guy walking past my door. He didn't look at my door or anything and didn't stop. I'm pretty sure he had no idea which apartment was mine. I decided to try to just forget about this guy. After that, I went to bed. The next day, obviously, he was no longer in the building, and since then, I haven't seen him. I still can't believe that he followed us back though. We must have just not noticed him. I'm not sure what he would have tried to do if he knew which apartment was mine. Possibly break in or knock on the door. 
I'm glad I didn't have to find out, though. This is something that happened last year when I went to my boyfriend's soccer game. He plays in this league that's not professional or college or anything, but it's still taken very seriously. Most games are at nearby parks depending on who they play. I go there sometimes here and there, and usually there are maybe 20 people that watch. Most of them are other wives and girlfriends like me. One time, the game was at a park that was about 10 minutes away, and it was a night game. I went to watch, and there was a game going on before my boyfriend's, so his game didn't start until about 8.30 p.m. Not very many people stuck around that late to watch it. Plus, it was kind of cold. I remember that it was also a bit foggy out, and there was just one set of bleachers that I was sitting in. I went and sat at the very top, and there was just a couple of people scattered around at the bottom. The field was surrounded by woods on three sides of it. Then, on one end, there was an open field, which led to a small park building. Past that and to the left was the parking lot. So I was sitting up in the bleachers and watching the game. I remember at one point I heard this noise behind me in the woods. It sounded like maybe an animal was moving through it. It had to be pretty loud though in order for me to notice. Being at the top back of the bleachers, I was probably 20 feet above ground and could look back into the wooded area. So I looked out to see what was there. I saw some movement of where the noise was coming from but I couldn't tell what it was. The soccer game wasn't really that exciting at the moment, so I got up from the bleachers and walked around to look. Once I was there, I could still hear the noise. The woods was very dense, but I could get a better view on the ground than from up in the bleachers. When I got close, the noise stopped. I was looking around, trying to see what it was. It seemed like it was coming from maybe 20 feet in or so. It was very dark back there. Then, I just happened to notice there was a man standing in the woods. It was kind of strange because there was no path going in those woods or anything. And the man was also staring right at me. His eyes were real wide, and I walked away when I saw him. I went right back to the bleachers and sat down again. I wasn't sure what the guy was doing there, but it was kind of strange. So I pretty much just watched the game for the next 30 minutes or so. In a break in the action, I got up to use the restroom over at the building. This was a pretty long walk, and nobody else was around. After doing so, I emerged to see the man standing not that far away from me. He was just staring at me again, and standing just outside of the woods, but now all the way over here. I began walking back to the bleachers, and the man remained standing there at first, but then he actually started walking back after me. I remember that he was trailing me almost the entire way back to the field, but he was a good distance behind me. Once I got to the field though, he sort of stopped. Then I got back to the bleachers and continued watching the game. I looked over, but did not see the man anymore. I didn't see him for the rest of the game either. I was a little creeped out by his odd behavior. After a while longer, the game finally ended. My boyfriend and I then started walking back to the parking lot. I remember that when we made it there, we saw the strange man standing near our vehicle. This was just really weird. The guy was just standing there, staring at us. We kept walking closer, but I honestly didn't want to get that close to him. When we made it within probably 10 feet of the guy, he just turned and then ran off into the woods. It was very strange. We left after that, but I've always been wondering ever since then what the guy was doing. This happened back when I was a kid. I think I was maybe 10 years old at the time. I played basketball growing up and would be on a team with a bunch of friends. One Saturday, my team was playing in a tournament at a local high school. In these tournaments, there would be a bunch of teams and you would usually play about two games in a day. So I remember that we played a game in the morning in the high school and we had some time before our next game, I think a couple of hours. So we were supposed to hang around the school. Most of my teammates were hanging out in the bleachers and watching the other games. I did that for a while, but my friend and I got kind of bored and wandered off. We started basically exploring the school. After walking around for a while, we came into this hallway at one end. We were far away from the gym, 
and every hallway was completely empty with it being a Saturday. I don't remember what we were doing back there other than just walking around. But in that hallway, I remember this guy came out of one of the classrooms. The lights had been off in the classroom, so I'm not sure what he was doing in there. I didn't recognize him at all either. He just appeared to be some guy, not a teacher or coach or anything. I remember that he approached us and asked us what we were doing back there. We said we were just walking around. I wasn't sure if we were in trouble and not supposed to go back there or what. But then I remember that the guy started basically trying to get us to leave with him. He was asking us to go to his car. We knew better though and said no to him, but he kept trying to convince us. I remember thinking that he had to be joking at first, but after a while I realized he was serious. After he was talking to us for maybe five minutes, I remember that out of nowhere we both just turned and ran. We went all the way back to the gym. The man didn't chase after us and stayed where he was. It was pretty weird and I didn't want to leave the basketball area for the rest of the day. Next to the gymnasium was the cafeteria of the school. There were concessions there and a decent amount of people hanging out. I went back in the gym and after a while I went out to get something to eat. When I did, I noticed the man. He was standing very far away in a hallway and looking at me. I remember that I ran back in the gym after I saw him. After that, I didn't see him for the rest of the time there. Sometimes I wonder what the guy was doing there and who he was. I'm really glad that my friend and I just ran away and ignored him.